Hey everyone, welcome to another episode about the LEGO Train Automated Container Terminal. I finally got this whole crane working now, and this crane is going to move containers from the monorail to the container yard, and vice versa. Um, so we're going to have a look how it all works, but before that I want to show you some things that I have done on this crane. I started a uh, previous episode with that I got this Y movement that I call it, the y-axis, I got that movement already in place. It was nicely ramping up and down, but it turned out there was a small offset every time it was moving. So when you move a few times, the offset became bigger and bigger, and uh, there was a problem. And so I taken a look at the library, uh, a better look at the library, I had to say, of Legoino. It turns out that there's a callback function that uh, receives a pulse from the powered up hub every time the tackle value of the motor is updated. So the motor is turning and uh, so every time this value is changing um, compared to the last value, this sends out a signal or something like that and this microcontroller can then uh, extract the information from the powered up hub. And it, it, it does that with a callback function. But the problem is that sometimes this callback function didn't work properly. It sometimes just didn't update the value. And I don't know why, it has to do something with the communication, I believe, between the powered up hub and the microcontroller. Couldn't figure out why. Uh, the result was that the TACO information wasn't correct enough and sometimes it was overshooting its position. So, um, to tackle that, I have taken a look at the library, the Leguino library, once more. <laughs> and this is a classical case of RTFM, read the effing manual, because it turned out that all the work that I had done, 800 lines of code inside this microcontroller to make it move in the right direction and, and stuff like that, those kind of functions was, were already in the library, but written in another way. Turns out that you can communicate with the powered up, uh, powered up hub just by saying go to 2500 and go to 500. And this one calculates uh, where it needs to go in which direction. Um, so I went from 800 lines to 300 lines of code using already what's inside here or inside the, uh, the library, I have to say. And um, based on that, I was controlling the motors in a different way. And because of that, I didn't need the callback function anymore, and it work was working just fine, no offset. But there was another problem. The library only can control one motor, motor at a time. So with the callback function, what I basically did was, you have two motors here that need to start at the same time, otherwise, you know, if, if this motor starts and that one doesn't, you know what happens, the whole thing goes... Uh, So what I basically does with, did with the callback function was starting the motors and then starting the callback function. And that worked just fine. Um, the motors were starting instantly after each other. Now using the powered up hub, when I gave the after and the, uh, editing the library a bit, because the library didn't have the functionality to control two motors at the same time, so uh, after that, um, when I was sending a command to the powered up hub, there was half a second delay between enabling the first motor and the second motor. Well, when there's a half second delay, it doesn't sound much, but it's enough to crash the whole crane. And I couldn't figure out why there was a delay. It has to do with somewhere inside here. I can I can control what's inside here, but I cannot control what's inside the powered up hub. So I took matter in my own hands and I soldered myself a wire. Um, so I connected the motors by wires now. So what I basically do is I connected this motor to the powered up hub and I connected four of the six wires from this motor to that motor. And the six wires are the two powering uh, power signals of the uh, actual power movement of the motors and two voltage uh, supply lines. So four of the six lines I have used to uh, also control this motor. So now I just have to control one port 
of the powered up hub and by doing so i can enable two motors and that works just fine well uh, long story short it was a rtfm didn't work so now i got my own hardware solution so let's have a look how the whole thing works i'm going to enable the system It's, uh, it has the same offset again. Yesterday it didn't have this offset, so... And I'm, I probably... Also there, there's an offset, the second container. Alright. Um... If you look, if you look closely, you can see that the second container, this one, is actually straight. <laughs> you see, compared to the other container, the first container, lower one, that one is put not completely straight on a pad, but the second one is. So the problem is the first container. And that's also what you see with the yellow one. Also the, that one is not completely straight. So I really think it has to do with the arm. So uh, we're gonna have a look at the slow motion footage and see if we can, uh, if we can discover the problem. Because I think I saw the arm going down and then moving a bit towards that direction at the end. At the most at the end. In the beginning it was going straight and then at the end it was going a bit like that causing this offset here in, in the Y direction. Why there's an offset in the X direction, I don't know. It seems like the grabber is not completely straight underneath the crane. Let me just wiggle it a little bit. Like that. Let's have one more try now and see if that did the trick or not. I don't think so, but if it does, I'm not happy because the whole system is pretty uh, sensitive. So th this was more or less more like yesterday when I was testing it. Um, but the yellow container still has an offset in the X direction as you can see here. It's not completely straight on the pad either. This first red container has an offset also but it's it's very little and I can live with that. But the second container there's the offset you know and I believe that like I said when it needs to go all the way down it goes a bit like that. It's, it's scooping a bit and um, that has to do with the fact that the arm is completely extracted and you can imagine when you're putting the the second container in place here the arm is halfway still inside here and placing the first container all the way down the arm is all the way inside here so this thing is is completely empty so it's it's not holding it as strongly as it is by putting the second container um, how to solve that? Uh, I don't know, we're gonna have a look at the footage first. Before we get started, I wanted to show you what might cause the offset, and that's when this arm is completely extracted. See? There's a, a lot of wobbling going on. I can move it like two studs apart. So that could be... This could be the biggest suspect for the uh, offset of the second container. So, here we are. Um, this is the footage and if you play it in slow-mo you can see it coming down you see it a bit wobbly it's a bit wobbly already in the uh, mostly in the x-axis but when it comes down at this point here 
you see that the side at our side of the container is already in place. But if you look at this angle here, assuming that the crane is straight, is horizontal, the grabber, which we can assume, more or less, <laughs> you can see that it didn't get the container completely straight. I'm gonna take a look from a different perspective, from a different angle, to see if at this point the container is on this side, on the pad, on that side, not yet. Cause so this is the footage that I took from the side. And what you can see is that the container is actually pretty, pretty straight underneath the grabber. And when it comes down, it also is pretty straight. It, you see that there's only like a few millimeters difference between the left side and the right side. That, that shouldn't be the problem. And you see that the whole crane is making a movement to the left once it does that last half centimeter. Is that a problem? Uh, yes. Is that solvable? Yes. I think there are two solutions. The first solution is that I need to support the arm much longer when it's going down. But when I need to support the arm much longer, it means that the arm gets longer. It means that the already high light gray top would become uh, higher as well, which uh, I don't think it's a good solution for now. So the second option that I have is software. And what I can do is, since this is a problem that is occurring with the first container when the arm is completely going down, so what I could do is add a few lines to the code that says, if you're placing the first container, then use these Y coordinates. If you are placing the second and third container, then use these Y coordinates. I'm not a huge fan of that because then, then you, you get your, uh, a bit of a, uh, an offset in your software. On the other hand, if that solves my problem, then, uh, then that's okay, I think. Uh, we're gonna first do a software update and see how that plays out. All right. Um, I probably did just discovered why the crane wasn't holding exactly straight the container. Uh, that was because the end of the monorail, all the way there, wasn't pushed completely into the studs, while the other end of the card here was already completely down. So that was a bit of a offset. Maybe that caused the wider crane didn't pick it up completely straight, uh, but it was within the margin. So I'm gonna, I've updated the software. Um, instead of going, um, I don't know, it's going 10 degrees less. So it's just a little bit. Let's see what it does. I just programmed it to do the first container and that's it. Needs a bit more. Well, will you just look at that? It's not completely straight. Oh, it's actually more off than I thought, but yeah, what's that? That's not even half a stud. That shouldn't be a problem, I think. Um, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna place three containers on top of each other and see how that turns out. All right, software is uploading. We're gonna now stack three containers on top of each other on this position here. Initializing now. Here we go. Yes. Mm. 
Well, as you can see, they're pretty close on top of each other. There's like the biggest difference is over here, like half a stud or something. This is within the margin. I'm not very happy with that difference that isn't there, but is there. Can you see it? And that has to do with the extension of the arm. It somehow turns a bit at the end. This one as well. So what I was saying is not correct. I don't know what the heck happened. <laughs> but um, for now, I think... Uh, I know. I think. I think I know. This is within the margin of error. I think I can live with this. So the next step is going to place containers on top of the monorail. But that's something for the next episode. So um, that this was it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Uh, leave a comment. Did you like it? Was it was it boring or did the compressor bother you? Please let me know. See you next time. Bye.